The streets of Sydney's southwestern suburbs were a war zone in the early 1990s, with gunshots echoing through the night as violent turf wars raged between rival criminal gangs. At the center of this brutal conflict was a ruthless Assyrian gang that quickly gained a reputation as a dangerous organization in the city, where drug trafficking, extortion, and shootings were routine as they battled for control. This is the story of the Assyrian kings in the last hour. The Last Hour traces its origins back to the 1990s in the southwestern suburbs of Sydney, Australia. At that time, a Syrian immigrant youth who had fled conflict in the Middle East and resettled in areas like Fairfield began forming gangs to control the lucrative drug trade. Many of these young Assyrians struggled to find their place in Australian society and criminal groups offered them a sense of identity, belonging and income. These early Assyrian groups went by names like the Assyrian Kings. Comprised of first and second generation immigrants, they were involved in distributing drugs throughout the region, quickly establishing themselves as a powerful criminal force. The Assyrian Kings showed their ruthlessness in 1997, when members were implicated in taking the life of 20 25-year-old off-duty constable David Carty. Constable David Carty was stabbed multiple times and stomped on in the car park of the Cambridge Tavern in Fairfield. Whispers on the street suggest that a member of the Assyrian Kings had been reprimanded by Carty earlier that evening. Five Assyrian Kings members were eventually charged, with the main offender receiving 28 years in prison. The intense investigation and crackdown by authorities put the Assyrian Kings under an intense spotlight and temporary crippled their operations. For a few years, gangs in the area were mostly localized and unconnected. They adopted names like the Fairfield Boys and others. This changed when Raphael Joseph, Raymond Umaran, and others decided to revive the Assyrian kings under a new name, The Last Hour, reportedly using the initials of the founding members. The Last Hour effectively took over where the Assyrian kings left off, and their revival was marked by even more bloodshed. In December 2002, Dimitri Debaz was shot execution-style outside the Playhouse in Sefton. The public shooting stemmed from an altercation involving Raymond, Raphael, and three others on one side, and the Debaz brothers on the other. Dimitri Debaz was celebrating his brother Alex's birthday with friends when Raymond, Raphael, and three others arrived. Within seconds, a violent fight erupted. CCTV footage showed Raymond and his accomplices, including Raphael, running to their car and grabbing a handgun. Shots were then fired into Dimitri Debaz in front of the hotel's entrance before Raymond and others fled the scene. It would later come to light that the shooting happened because of a gang rivalry, as Dimitri Debaz was allegedly associated with the Bronx Boys. The passing of Dimitri Debaz led to a spate of retaliatory crimes in Sydney's southwest, including drive-by shootings and kidnappings. Raymond and Raphael were now the primary suspects, and they immediately went on the run. Raymond continued his operations while evading police, which led to him becoming New South Wales' most wanted man. As the last hour's criminal activities escalated into the mid-2000s, their use of public violence reached shocking new levels. In 2005, a seemingly minor argument at a Persian New Year's party in Sydney took a tragic turn and resulted in two lives being taken. 25-year-old Nasser Gaderi had stepped in to help a friend who was arguing with a man named Ahmed Al-Fadli. Little did Gaderi know, Al-Fadli was allegedly a key member of the last hour. On April 16, 2005, Gaderi and his friend, Kavan Gajalu, were gunned down in a drive-by shooting in the Rocks area of Sydney. The shooters rolled up in a Volkswagen and BMW and asked if they were the boys from the Persian party and then opened fire, taking their lives on the spot. Just five days after the shooting, Al-Fadli fled Australia to Kuwait and no one was ever charged as there wasn't enough evidence for a case or an extradition order. Just months later, in November 2005, the Babylon Cafe in Fairfield was sprayed with up to 17 bullets from semi-automatic pistols by three gunmen in balaclavas. The hail of bullets took the life of an innocent bystander, Raymond Kanania, and wounded three others in what was believed to be a case of mistaken identity. Police believe the shooting was linked to the last hour. However, no charges were ever laid. After years as a fugitive, Raymond's evasion skills were put to the test in February 2006. He was spotted at a Woodcroft home and led police on a high-speed chase across Sydney's motorways, reaching speeds of 200 kilometers per hour. 
Police eventually called off the pursuit for safety reasons, and while Raymond escaped, they later arrested an alleged accomplice and seized a Mercedes involved in the chase for forensic testing. While Raymond was still on the run, the violence associated with the last hour showed no signs of slowing down. In April 2006, just months after Raymond's high-speed escape from police, another brutal shooting shook Sydney's southwestern suburbs. The victim this time was 21-year-old Ashore Odisho, gunned down in broad daylight on Hamilton Road in Fairfield West. This wasn't just another random act of violence, it bore all the hallmarks of a gang-related hit, quickly linked to the last hour ongoing reign of terror. By the end of the year, they had three suspects in custody. Among them was Linaj Shamoui, a founding member of The Last Hour and a key player in Sydney's underworld. Shamoui would later plead guilty to taking Audisho's life, receiving a 14-year sentence. But the story doesn't end there, as Shamoui was already out on bail for a separate attempt at taking someone's life while charged at the time of Audisho's passing. He would eventually be found guilty of that crime too, adding another nine years to his time behind bars. From reckless police chases to cold-blooded public executions underscored the last hour's escalating dominance in Sydney's suburbs. However, the violence could not go unchecked forever. In June 2006, a series of police raids on homes across Sydney's southwestern suburbs finally led to the arrest of the notorious Raymond Umaran after four years on the run and arrested seven other high-ranking members of the last hour. Two years later in 2008, Raymond pleaded guilty to taking the life of Dimitri Debaz, receiving a 17-year minimum sentence. His former partner in crime, Raphael Joseph, who was still a wanted man, had managed to flee to the United States, but was arrested in San Diego in October 2006 for being an illegal immigrant. But how did Raphael, a prime suspect in the Dimitri Debaz case, end up clear across the Pacific in San Diego? When questioned by US authorities after his arrest, he claimed to have been smuggled out of Australia via Turkey, Thailand, and Mexico before finally reaching San Diego. He begged not to be sent back to Sydney because there was a 100 thousand dollars contract on his life and that the Bronx boys would hunt him down if he stepped foot in Australia again. He requested to be deported to his birth country Iraq, but after over a year fighting extradition, Raphael was sent back to Sydney in early 2008 to face charges related to Dimitri Debaz, though they were ultimately dropped. But that's not the end of his story. Fast forward six years later to March 2014 and Raphael vanishes. He was last seen getting into a sedan in Auburn, never to be seen again. He was seen hours before his disappearance when he was visiting Wayne Schneider, a former Sydney Hells Angel who also had his life taken just 18 months later. Both were known to be friends who had climbed the ranks to become major international drug dealers. Years later, the police made a breakthrough when they found a car with hidden compartments on a rural property linked to Raphael's disappearance and they suspect his life was taken by people close to him for financial gain. Despite a million dollar reward for information on his disappearance, his fate remains a mystery to this day. While the 2006 arrests of Raymond and his associates represented a major victory for law enforcement, they continued efforts to dismantle the last hour's operations over the following years. On September 24, 2013, over 300 armed officers conducted 22 simultaneous raids that severely disrupted the group. 15 suspects were arrested, with assets like jet skis, a Lotus sports car, and a boat confiscated. Among the charges were drug trafficking, possession, and participating in a criminal organization. Just a year later in 2014, police declared they had dismantled the last hour's operations after arresting the remaining key members, seizing more drugs, and describing the last hour as finished after years of persistent crackdowns. However, the cycle of violence was far from over and it continued on into the prisons. In 2015, religious tensions in Goulburn's maximum security jail reached a boiling point in the ongoing Muslims versus Christians conflict. Adnan Dawich, a Muslim gang member, had been allegedly planning on taking action against those that oppose his religion. And since the last hour and the previously known Assyrian kings were made up of Christians, two members decided to strike first in a daylight attack on Adnan Dawich, using makeshift weapons in front of four prison guards. Retaliation came about a year later in August 2016, when Fadi Shamoun, an inmate with ties to the last hour, was assaulted multiple times by Darwich and another inmate in Cessnock prison using a sharpened aluminum window frame. 
As members of The Last Hour were slowly released from prison, the gang landscape in Sydney's southwestern suburbs saw some big changes. A new breakaway group known as the True Kings emerged. This splinter group quickly became a rival, leading to a violent turf war over drug supply and control, leading to more drive-by shootings, fire bombings, and executions. In one incident, a senior member of The Last Hour, Samia Marcus, and two other members allegedly shot at a car driven by members of the True Kings. The shooting took place at a park in Fairfield in May 2016. One of the True Kings managed to escape, but the other member was trapped inside of the car as a member from the last hour approached and attempted to pull the trigger, but the weapon failed to fire. These type of shootings would continue throughout the year. Antonio Hermes, an associate of the last hour, was executed at Lizard Log Park in Wetherill Park in December 2016. He was sitting in his car when another vehicle pulled up and opened fire on him. That shooting would shine some light on a police investigation that was ongoing at the time because earlier that year in May, ex-Nomad's bikey Adrian Buxton was also executed outside of his home. After the Antonio Hermes shooting, police started to think that the last hour was behind taking the life of Adrian Buxton, though they didn't have solid evidence for the motive. They would later seize a car with a .32 caliber pistol and a .357 Magnum at a house in Cabramatta and arrested two members of the last hour. When they ran ballistic tests on the guns, they found that one was indeed used in the Adrian Buxton shooting. It's believed that Antonio Hermes was trying to hide an Audi Q7 used in Adrian Buxton's shooting, but the car was never found. At this point, the violence was at its peak, which prompted the police to launch Operation Condor to stamp out the gang violence in Sydney's suburbs. The operation targeted the ongoing feud between the last hour and the true kings. The police tried fishing for information from family members and associates, but they were getting nowhere. That was until a true king's associate came forward. He was given protection, and in return, the police were able to charge three members from the last hour, including a senior founding member. The police would also learn that the last hour were also running a drug distribution operation from out of Queensland's Gold Coast. This would lead to the arrest of another member of the last hour with more than 30 drugs charges. Police believed that the member was running the operation for a number of years and that many members of the last hour were visiting the Gold Coast on a regular basis, possibly working together with motorcycle clubs. That happened in 2017 and skipping a few years to June 2020, senior member Samir Marcus suffered a severe face injury. He was on his way to Bonnie Rig Heights when a man unleashed a number of bullets at him. Samir turned up at the hospital three days later with the injury. A man would later be charged for the incident with 10 offences, and they even managed to charge Samir for taking too long to turn up with the injury and concealing information from the police. Just four months later after that attack, Samir was gunned down again outside his parents' home in Denham Court. He sustained five head injuries from close range. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition, and by some miracle, he managed to survive that assassination attempt too. His injuries were so severe that he will unlikely fully recover. A senior member of the True Kings was executed in January 2021 outside a home in Fairfield, linked to the feud between the True Kings and the Last Hour. CCTV footage released by police showed two men fleeing the scene. 